now my pleasure to invite Noah Gilbert to share a Devar Torah with our congregation. So as they say, when you do something once, it's an anomaly. When you do it twice, it becomes tradition. And now that it's three times, it means that it was me Sinai. It's happened forever and therefore will happen forever. <laughs> so we are delighted that Noah is um, sharing some words of Torah with us. And we're excited to learn from them. A year ago, Rabbi Berezin and I sat down to workshop the second iteration of this Pride Sermon, and she said, you could talk about the legislative session, and I said, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I needed time to figure out how to talk about it first, and so this is the sermon that I've spent about a year figuring out how to write. So the 2023 legislative session, if you are not as involved and always ever present as it felt like me and Rabbi Berezin and many other people were, uh, included uh, a suite of attacks on gender affirming health care uh, for young trans people, drag performance, abortion access, public education, many of the things that we hold very dear to us. And because of the sheer volume of these bills and the repetitive process that they went through from the hearing to general file to select file, we all ended up in Lincoln a lot. Charlie and I organized trips for high schoolers from Central. I went with my parents, with Rabbi Berezin, with my friends. We drove for an hour. We sang songs in the rotunda. We wrapped ourselves in pride flags. We crammed into the benches of the balcony and heard senators say horrific things about us, and we drove back in the dark. We drove for an hour. We filled the hallways with signs and chants. We pleaded before committees, and we drove back in the dark. At some point in the spring, this became a ritual. What brings ritual out of repetition? Something I learned is that what makes a ritual work is its transformative nature. Something changes after a ritual, internally or externally. For me, what changed in the ritual of the legislature was realizing the underlying meaning and communication in our actions and presence, regardless of their results. I began to understand that no matter what the legislature ended up doing, our presence was an act of communication, that LGBTQ people, and trans youth in particular, belong in Nebraska, are valued and loved no matter what. This week's Parsha is Chukim, which are the laws we have in Judaism that defy easy rationalization. So some of our Jewish law, Mishpatim, make really clear sense, no stealing, no murdering, etc. but other laws are not so much so, mystifying, confusing, and troubling, and these laws are the Chukim. At times, as modern Jews, we follow them first without fully understanding how their meaning might fit into our lives. Our understanding of the meaning of these laws often comes through our actions, through doing them without fully understanding why. We kept going back to Lincoln, even when we lost, even when it was the last thing I wanted to be doing. We kept returning. The question, what is the point, is a scary question and a valuable question. It confronts the possibility that there might not be an answer. There is so much that we watch. On an international scale, we watch the devastation of war and we grieve our children, all of them are children. We watch forces of authoritarianism and ethno-nationalism rise in our state, our nation, and around the world, and in many ways, we are powerless to this. Yet, we are still drawn to try, to try to understand, to create change, to do our part, whatever that means, to do something more than watch, even knowing our relative powerlessness. I think that the point, the why, is the communication of meaning. There's the pragmatic aspect of our activism, the law and policy that we try and impact. But intertwined with that, there is a ritual aspect, the part that adds personal and communal meaning to our actions and our presence, our declaration of values to each other and to ourselves. What are the ways in all of the communities that we walk between that our actions and symbols communicate value? And are they the values that we want to be communicating? We are gathered here tonight, uh, and tomorrow we'll walk together in pride. We talk to each other, to our neighbors, and to people with similar and vastly different experiences and identities. We challenge ourselves and each other. We wrestle. We are willing to learn. We refuse to let dehumanization and bigotry infiltrate our communities, and we show up for more than ourselves. In this vastly uncontrollable world, here, I think, is the point. Happy Pride and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.